Hello and welcome and in this lecture we are going to prepare our bootloader for being booted on a real machine. Now in most cases this current bootloader will run just fine. However some BIOSes including my BIOS will tamper with your data if you boot your bootloader from a USB stick. Now the reason this happens is because of the BIOS parameter block. Some BIOSes expect this, while most BIOSes will not corrupt your data and will work just fine with the code that we have here, some will actually start filling in information. And it's important this doesn't happen. So here you can see things like number of sectors per cluster, number of reserved sectors, and so on. My BIOS actually replaces these numbers in memory with numbers of its own. Because when we boot from a USB stick, we're actually doing something known as USB emulation. The BIOS is treating our USB stick as a hard drive or a hard disk and allowing us to talk to it as such. So you don't really need to know too much about the BIOS parameter block right now. You just need to know that some BIOSes assume it's there and will start writing data overriding your code, which can lead to problems. For example, our little program here will boot for me. However, this jump instruction here is corrupted. So it causes my um, system to just keep running code in RAM. It never stops. Um, so we get around this problem by implementing the bias parameter block. We don't, ha we don't have to have real values. It can just be all zeros. And we can basically just have a fake one just to get around this problem. So the first thing we do is, is we add up the size of the BIOS parameter block except these three bytes because these three bytes are a short jump and a no operation. And some BIOSes will look for this as well. So uh, we're actually going to write that in, but the rest will be all fake. So I've added those up and I've come up with the value of 33. So that's the size of it apart from our short jump. Um, also note, this is osdev.org. It's a fantastic resource for people wanting to develop kernels and operating systems. It's very detailed. Some stuff's out of date, so make sure you check. So if you ever decide to use this website, make sure you check multiple sources to, um, if you run into problems. Right, so um, we need to actually basically just make 33 bytes in our bootloader so that if your bias is like mine, when it comes and overwrites stuff, uh, it isn't actually damaging your code. It's just writing into your fake uh, BIOS parameter block. So we go back to Visual Studio Code. Um, we're we're going to start by making our short jump here that it expects. There's three bytes in size, right? So it's a short jump and a no operation. So uh, we're going to start by doing that. And we do that by creating another label. We'll just go under scroll start. And then we're just going to go jump short start. Okay. And then we're just going to go knob by here. And this this line of code that we have here will need to be copied. And we'll need to place that here. Okay. And we're just going to replace the start with step two, something like that. And then we're just going to put step two by there. So I know that's a mouthful, but then our bias parameter block will go in the middle by here, right? So just to clarify what we've done here, we've created a new label, underscore start, that just jumps to our start label here. And this is also a short jump, right? And we have a no operation here as required for our bias parameter block as well. So then what happens is the program comes in here, jumps to our start label here. Okay, and then we jump to step two, but we, we specify the segment 0x7c0 so that the code segment register gets replaced with 0x7c0, right? And then it'll start executing step two, which will print our message. So in here then, um, we need to go times. And the value was, I think it was 33. Times 33 db0 so all this will do then is it will create 33 bytes just after our short jump here and that is our bias parameter block so if your bias does start filling in these values 
it doesn't corrupt your code it just fills in these null bytes so it's perfectly safe okay let's just assemble that and see if that works as expected so we just go nasm dash f bin boot dot asm dash o boot dot bin and then we're gonna run qmu and we see hello world so that works fine on the emulator and i think now we're ready to test it on your real machine thank you for watching this lecture this is a preview from the developing a multi-threaded kernel from scratch course if you would like to buy the course you can find a direct link to the course with a discount coupon in the video description if you would like to keep watching these free previews please also check the description of this video for the next part.